What's going on guys, Resar34 here, back again with another FRS update. I'm sorry, I know it's been a while and I know you're probably pissed off at me, but yeah, life happens and it uh, definitely did. So, but I digress. Let me fill you in on exactly what's happened since the last time we spoke. So, new things with the FRS, a bunch. Um, I believe I left off with that I was on a OFG flex, or not flex fuel tune, E85 only tune. I had my header, my coilovers, my wheels, um, and I believe that's it. Well, Hurricane Irma came. I proceeded to uh, crash my car into the wall of my work <laughs> while um, I purchased, what had happened was I purchased an eBay lip and I'll post up some photos in this video of the eBay lip and then uh, while installing it at work I, I kind of like parked it up and back off to the uh, the side of the like a uh, back loading dock that we have right and so while working on it I was super tired and I was fighting um, uh, another issue at the time which was I kept blowing my fender liners out my sidewall up front on my tire my wheels were way too high and for some reason I kept rubbing really bad on the liner and eventually it blew out and totally pissed me off uh, so I was fixing that while installing my lip and I went with the, um, not the HT Autos lip, I went with the eBay one that's really popular, but I went with the STI version that nobody really runs on the FRS, and I think it looks really good. It's a lot cleaner, simpler line. It's called, I can't remember the name of the company. I'm super sorry, but I will post it here as text. Um, it looks really good. I would recommend it if you're looking for a budget lip and you don't really mind drilling into your bumper. Um, I I didn't mind because it was the bottom of the bumper but at the same time I'm somebody who comes from a 240 so I'm used to like really clean like form-fitted type stuff you know like that's how my pig nose lip was is it just like sucked on to the bumper so anyways uh, I was at work I was putting on uh, the lip I was fixing my fender liners I was super tired and like rushed because I was doing it during lunch break and I wasn't paying attention, I wasn't thinking about it, but I was on like a hill, so I had it in gear. Um, I put the car down, I fucking, you know, was like just trying to finish up, started it up, and I kissed the fucking wall at my work because it jumped forward since it was in gear. I ended up causing a crease down in the center of the front bumper, and it definitely sucked. I was a little pissed off. I didn't really have time to do anything about it because Hurricane Irma was literally about to hit that fucking week or it was it had just passed or something like that. it was either just passed or it was coming so I had to park their vehicle inside our warehouse um, during the hurricane thank god I had that uh, privilege of doing that because my car would have been exposed to the elements and I was pretty I was pretty nervous about that moving forward I, I my bumper got fucked up and so I was I was super sour about it and I, I needed to buy a new bumper. After shopping around through the dealership, etc., I ended up finding a new bumper through a local like uh, customization shop. Like they do like high-end vehicles, FRSs, everything. What's funny is that there's a guy there that actually owned an FRS and then so they're pretty much like the V86 shop around here, which is pretty neat to have. Because I know most cities, you know, you don't have something like that. I contacted Danny at Amplified Auto Sports. So if you're if you're in the uh, Tampa Bay area and you need some work done to your FRS, highly recommend this guy. Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. He ended up getting me a brand new bumper from Subaru for like, you know, I, I don't know how much. Like it was it was considerably less than what I was about to pay for it online. And. Uh, so he got me a new bumper, new mud guards, uh, the new mud guard that I blew out on the highway that one time I went to the cars and coffee meet, you guys remember that. Um, new fender liners and a uh, new grill. So then 
uh, I was in search of a new lift, so I took, I was at, you know, I kind of considered, I was like, you know what, if I'm gonna have to get this bumper painted, I might as well explore my lip options and, and do it now. I shopped around for a while, I was kind of in between a couple of lips, and I ended up with, like, the best lip I could get, I think, next to, like, something really cool. Like, that would be extremely expensive. Uh, but I honestly, I don't think I, like, now after owning this lip, I, there's nothing really out there that I'm, like, wowed about, unless it's, like, wide body or something like, like that, or a totally different front bumper. And even then, I considered aftermarket front bumpers, but then the whole, like, factor of it, like, being fiberglass or polyurethane, and then, like, now after dealing with some polyurethane products or, or FRP shit, it's not perfect, and I'm kind of a, a picky person when it comes to that s stuff, so, you know, like, after dropping it off at a body shop and then, like, getting pissed about, like, pinholes or weird, like, waviness, etc., you know, I'm, I'm glad I was stuck with the OEM bumper. I do kind of wish I would have done something, like, real nasty and did, like, a 17 BRZ bumper with, like, a splitter, which is what everyone seems to be going to right now because of the new um, clip or new um, mounting or headlight bracket that they have on the bumper fits really good and doesn't sag anymore. But anyways, I love my FRS and I love the choice that I made. So I ended up going with the Greddy Gracer lip and I got it through 86 speed. Uh, they're fantastic. I can't speak highly enough about them. I went through them in the past and I told you guys their shipping is extremely fast and they're really personable. If you message, if you DM them on Instagram or you contact them or anything like that, they'll respond to you. They'll, they'll have like a casual conversation with you and they're pretty cool guys. They uh, sent me the Gracer lip. They actually had it in stock, which nobody else had it. So it was gonna be like, you know, a couple weeks out for it to ship from Japan. They had it in stock. I purchased it. I told them what I was doing, which was different than anybody else I seen do it. So they were, they were super, uh, you know ecstatic and they, they asked me to send them some photos so I had it color matched and also kind of like not molded but uh, cleaned up a little bit to, to be like a form flush fit with the uh, the bumper so the end result is that it looks fucking awesome so I gotta rip it uh, the end result is that it looks extremely clean it fits like a fucking glove like literally just like sucks onto the bumper there is double-sided tape underneath it so I have no intentions of taking it off and then I, what I'm really happy about and the re main one of the main reasons I went with it is because it's made out of ABS plastic which is durable you know like my 240 uh, OEM lip was ABS plastic so you could smack the ground it, it you know more than likely won't break it's much 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 more durable than like FRP or uh, polyurethane or whatever you know I went with the Greddy lip I color matched it exactly which I've seen a lot of, I found people that rocked it but I found a lot of people that were putting it on and then they were not painting it they were leaving it black or they were painting like half of it or something like goofy like that or running the trim kit because it comes with this rubber grommet that you run like around the edge of the the uh, where it meets the bumper and I thought that just looked really tacky it, like it was like a red lip, red bumper, and then this black pinstripe all the way around, or white, or whatever color you wanted to do. On a white car, you could get away with it, because it would be a white lip, white bumper, and then a gray trim piece, so you wouldn't really see it, but I don't know, for me, I, I like it to look kind of seamless, so to have that pinstripe is, uh, you know, just unattractive. It looks like it's, it looks like it isn't, like, isn't part of the body. It looks like it's just kind of something that was, like, stuck on and not like you know flush so I had the body guy kind of like smooth out the edges and try to clean it up the best he could to get it to like basically look seamless like it's like it's came that way from the factory it came that way and I accepted the fact that yes the lip is gonna be on the on the paint it's gonna be paint on paint you know paint it on the lip and paint it on the bumper fine whatever I I'm not gonna take it off ever again so if I do I'll get the bumper painted anyways that came out beautifully I'm super fucking happy with it um, you know the it, the guy who painted it works for Toyota uh, he's a nice guy 
he just overloaded himself with his work. So it took a really long time to, for him to do my lip. And then the, after he did the bumper in the lip, he, uh, there was an issue, a complication with the paint getting burnt through during the buffing process. So he ended up having to redo everything. And then, uh, you know, it, it is what it is. Uh, I'm here now, the car looks great. I can't bash the guy. You know, it's just, he was starting a side venture and just got a little too overwhelmed. He did a great job though. Um, he did, and then recently I had him paint another piece, which I'm gonna get into in a second. So the bumper came out really good. I sent off pictures that I just roughly took to 86 speed. They actually liked it so much they shared my picture twice on Instagram, two different, se uh, two separate occasions. They actually used it for like, you know, Black Friday marketing or something like that. So I'm pretty flattered. My car looks great. I get compliments all the time and I know there's some people out there that are a little jealous and jealous of it. But uh, you know what? Uh, imitation is the best form of flattery, so do it. Buy it. It's fucking awesome. I love the lip. Go out there and get that shit. It's only 250 bucks. Not that bad compared to what you're getting for it being ABS and really and fitting really well. Okay, so the next body mod that I did was I got a new wing. Uh, I finally got rid of my stock like boomerang, goofy looking FRS spoiler. It's called. It's actually the monogram spoiler. I didn't realize that. I don't know why anybody would have that shit put on the car. It looks so odd. Uh, no offense. But I ended up being beside myself on two different spoiler options. I, did, I couldn't decide if I wanted to go with uh, a TRD replica, a, a Legsport duckbill, or the Mod Bargains wing. And the Mod Bargains wing is basically just like a TRD replica, but it's a little bit it's kind of an in-between of the, the leg sport and the TRD as in uh, if I could compare it to something it looks like the carbon trunk that everyone loves but not the carbon trunk so it's like the TRD wing if it kicked up a little bit more and then went out like so it went out a little bit more which is what you want and then also had a little bit of an up kick to it I think it looks fantastic and that's what I chose um, I saw the leg sport in person and I just wasn't a fan of it. It was a little too vertical for me. So it kind of just looked a little strange. It's a good looking wing. It sits on the body nice, but it just went too like too upright for me. Um, and then the TRD one was just a little too flat. Like it just seemed like it just went like this and that's it. So I wanted that like carbon trunk little like out and then up. And that's what I think I achieved now. I'm super happy with it. It did, however, take some finesse to get it to fit. Um, obviously, being an FRP product, and this is where I've kind of like derived this uh, uh, opinion about it. It wasn't the straightest thing in the world. It arrived, it looked really good, the holes didn't really match up, so I didn't actually end up using any, any of the mounting holes. I did, however, cover all of them, but we just decided to mount it with some super strong 3M double-sided tape and adhesion promoter. And the paint guy obviously painted it and he said he filled all the pinholes and did the best job he could. And it looks pretty good. It's not, I wouldn't say it's a 10 out of 10. It's definitely a nine out of 10. Um, but the look, the, the, the actual look is an 11 out of 10 in my book. I'm super happy with it. I love it. Um, I actually have a friend with the TRD rep and uh, I would say that mine is a little bit longer. A little bit longer and a little bit kick, more kick up to it. But they'll, they'll disagree with me. Um, so moving forward, uh, actually moving backward because the, the wing was actually just the last thing I just finished last month. So getting into what I did around the time of the bumper slash hurricane, uh, I went flex fuel and I also went HRI tune. So I contacted James at HRI tuning and I was like, look, after this hurricane and driving around and not being able to find E85 when I was on a straight E85 tune, I was like, this, this is no good. Um, especially if I want to go force induction. So I splurged and ended up buying the Moto East flex fuel kit comes with the GM Continental Sensor, uh, the wiring harness. I ended up just opting for the easiest 
method, which is where you run only the um, uh, off the rear O2 rather than the one the sensor or the harness that plugs into the wiring or the ECU. He said it was a lot easier to work with as far as tuning goes, so it makes sense. Um, it was super easy to install. Uh, it's super straightforward. I uh, plopped all that in, drove over to, to Orlando, and personally, personally got. Uh, I just saw my this guy I know with the S14. Um, I personally got tuned by James himself on a flex fuel uh, tune. So I can run E85, 93, 91, whatever I wanted to run. I pretty much am sticking to just straight E85 all the time. So right now, uh, I'll show you a picture of my gauge. I've been seeing about E79, E80 around my area, which is awesome. Uh, he said the FA20 doesn't really, there's no real gains to be had above E70. And I think at the time we tuned it at E65. So that was pretty nice. I apologize. Like I'm sorry that I had so much time away from shooting video. I just was uh, going through some things in my personal life, and um, you know I just didn't wasn't able to. All right. Sorry about that. I had to take a quick break. I ran into a, my friend that has an S14 over there, so I was just kind of chatting it up with him. I hadn't seen him in like fuck so many years. Um, so right now I'm driving to Tampa. And why am I going to Tampa? I'm actually going up to Tampa to pick up another set of lower control arms and tow rods. The same ones that I already purchased before, but I'm picking them up for a friend. Um, and speaking of that friend, I actually picked up... Uh, I actually picked up a set of HKS uh, Hypermax 4 GT coilovers for that friend. Um, I found them for a really good deal, but unfortunately they arrived broken on the dampening uh, knob. So we ultimately decided to send them back for a refund and went with a brand new set of BC Racing coilovers, which was the smarter choice in my opinion. Uh, the HKSs would have been awesome because they're a superior coilover, but the fact that they were gently used and had a bro arrived broken, I took that as kind of a sign that you know what step away especially after trying to get a hold of their customer service department in order to order a, a new adjustment knob which was virtually impossible by the way everyone's a JDM fanboy I like JDM parts they're they're really nice but goddamn if, if something breaks you're fucked like I'm sorry but you're absolutely fucked I, I contacted everyone everyone that's a distributor a vendor uh, fucking just know somebody who knows somebody and everyone was like no man we can't do anything and I was like HKS USA doesn't even have a damn contact like any kind of contact information for you to even get a hold of them why how are you gonna sell products and then have no information I don't it makes no fucking sense to me uh, customer service is everything uh, but anyways um, we ended up going with the BCs, and since they're out of Orlando, it was just a smart choice. The war there's brand new, there's a warranty, uh, you know, came with brand new uh, sway bar end links, and then for the same price that I got the HKSs for, we're getting damn control arms and tow rods, so it's a complete total package, which I've, you guys know I've been on these used BCs for months now, and I still fucking love them. They feel fantastic. and. As a side note, one thing that I forgot to mention is I finally was like, oh, I wonder what my dampening's at after I had everything done at LHT. I checked it. I actually was on like zero. And I, <laughs> and I was like, why the hell am I on zero? So I turned it up to around 15 or, oh shit. Guy walking on the highway, all right. Uh, I actually turned the dampening up to 15 or so and now it feels pretty solid. I did that after I blew out my liners and I got super fucking pissed. So I turned that shit up to 30 and ordered uh, smaller sidewall tires for the front. So now I got this like real fucking meatball aggressive like mini baby Supra look. I love it. One other thing that happened that you guys might have seen on my Instagram. So basically I've been slacking on my YouTube, but on my Instagram I've been going pretty hard. Check it out. I post almost daily on that. 
So if you want to keep up with me, the car, whatever, check out my Instagram, resar34 on, on IG, and shoot me a DM. I'm down to chat, talk, whatever. Uh, you know, if you want to, if you want some help with your 86, anything, or just like an opinion, I'm not an expert, I'm not a pro, but I feel like I know some things about it. I got uh, my vanity plate finally. I think I hinted about it in maybe the last video with you guys because I purchased it around my birthday in August. Um, sorry, I had to take that turn there. Uh, I'm getting on the highway. Anyways, uh, yeah, my Van Lee plate finally came in. I absolutely love it. I feel like it's kind of like the the final touch that just like makes the car like like encompasses everything and makes the car look really like just unique. You know, like it definitely it, it, it adds that neck breaker factor to a car that normally doesn't break necks. You know, it, if you saw a stock if you saw a stock ERZ or, or something like that and it had just the vanity plate, you would do a double take. Now, mine looks a little bit more aggressive now, so obviously that'll turn some heads, but then just having that little extra bit, that little plate, I feel like just makes the difference to where somebody remembers your car versus just sees it drive by and then says, oh yeah, I saw a red FRS. No, I saw a red FRS and the plate said no power. So that's the plate that I ended up with. I went back and forth with a couple ideas, but I ended up settling with that. I felt like it would be a plate that I could grow with. It would be a play on words in a sense that, yes, I have no power right now. Well, in, in my opinion, at least. Actually, after my HRA tune, this thing fucking rips. It feels like, I don't know, it feels like 200 horsepower. It absolutely rips. Um, and I'll make a separate video discussing my ECU Tech HRA tune because there's so much with it that I feel like he deserves every bit of credit because that guy is fucking phenomenal. Fu nominal <laughs> and he, he that James is man straight up the no power was kind of like poking fun at how everyone thinks the car is super underpowered but at the same time when I go for induction or if I make power it's kind of like you know that trickery like oh yeah I got no power you know like sleeper it gives it that sleeper vibe or if I upgrade to a better car let's say my you know how I wanted the vet, or if I get something even cooler, like a Porsche or a uh, Viper, I feel like then it would be even even more, uh, you know, like, like yeah, no power, what's up? Come get some. You know, it kind of gives it that, that extra demeanor that, you know, does it have power or does it not? It makes people, keeps people guessing. So I definitely enjoy it. And I feel like if you are thinking about getting a vanity plate, you should just go ahead and do it because you'll thank yourself with all like the neck breaks or the smiles or the laughs. I had so many people after the hurricane taking pictures of my car because ironically, we had no fucking power here in Florida. So everyone was kind of like taking pictures of it like, oh shit, no, no power right now. But in reality, I didn't do it based upon that. Well, anyways, I'm gonna end that video right now. I know I'm probably forgetting some stuff, but I'll cover it in the next one. I just wanted to say, Hello, I'm sorry, please forgive me. I know it's been way too fucking long. Uh, you know, uh, I'm gonna try to make a commitment to you guys. Uh, I've squared away a bunch of things and I'm at a really good place now. I'm actually starting my masters in January, so I'm ec ecstatic about that. And I'm just making, 2018 is gonna be a year for you and I to progress do awesome things and make some serious moves. And I have a little trick up my sleeve for the FRS that I don't want to divulge in, but I made a Black Friday purchase. And the FRS is about to get real, really real. And I want to bring you guys along. So stay tuned and thank you guys for watching. Peace out.